Hey, welcome back for another episode of Crunch Week. My name is Colleen Taylor. I'm Ryan Lawler. I'm Anthony Ha. And uh, it's been another beautiful, exciting week here at TechCrunch with a lot of things to cover. A uh, big story that everyone's talking about is this Adria Richards, PyCon, SendGrid firing debacle. Yeah, no dick jokes, guys. <laughs> Watch it. No <laughs> dongle Went jokes. Went out right away. <laughs> no forking yeah. jokes. Yeah, so um, I, I don't think that anyone who's watching does not already know the, the kind of general overall story of what happened. Um, yeah, I mean, should we, I guess we'll just like really, no, I guess we'll, do we need to summarize it? Yeah, well, we, we can. So, so w our, one of our biggest stories was Kim Mike Cutler, one of our writers, just kind of wrote a really, you know, concise summary of what happened. There was, you know, this woman at a tech conference, she's a developer evangelist at SendGrid, and she overheard a couple guys behind her making some sexual jokes um, about dongles and forking repos. And uh, then she got offended and tweeted it out. And one of the guys ended up getting fired and it ended up being a big... And then she ended up getting fired. And she ended up finally getting fired uh, because Anonymous showed I don't know her if, wrath. I don't know if like one day later counts as finally getting fired, but no, it was yeah. like five days later. Was oh because yeah, the conference yeah. it was like Saturday. Okay, Sunday, right, yeah, yeah. It's just I guess it, yeah, but the I guess sort of yeah the the, the controversy like kind of built up over about twenty four hours. I would say, or that was when it started to become. Well, she got fired yesterday, which was Thursday. Right. So I think this just shows that it wasn't because she was fired not because of how she handled the situation because Senator right. seemed to be okay with that at first, but then. Right. Uh, Anonymous uh, started doing DDoS attacks against SendGrid, and I think SendGrid kind of thought that their back was up against a wall and that their company was going to go out of business unless they fired this woman because people were not relenting. Well, this was, I, I feel like this was one of those situations where it was kind of like in each is instance of whatever happens, the reaction was just so far out of proportion with the original offense. Um, that uh, it was kind of like just everybody being assholes, right? It was like, so guys are making a couple of like sexist comments in the background and, you know, did they really need to be publicly... Arguably sexist. Right. Arguably sexist comments. Um, did they really need to be, you know, outed publicly, shamed on Twitter? Probably not. Did one of them need to get fired uh, over this, um, did Anonymous have to start sending DDoS attacks against SendGrid? You know, it just snowballed uh, all the way along and made everyone look bad. Yeah, I, would, I think that's pretty accurate. Although, I mean, I guess the one the one thing that wasn't surprising was just, you know, I mean, I think Anonymous in general is sort of, you, you would expect them to sort of react slightly out of proportion to <laughs> whatever was going on. Um, I'm sure saying that is going to do wonders for our website, too. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, I, I do, yeah, also, f it's one of those things where at a core level, I think at the beginning everyone felt like, or not everyone, I, I certainly felt very conflicted because it seems like obviously, I didn't actually think personally that those comments were sexist. I thought they were very insensitive and I think that it's also, you know, I understand that most tech conferences are very male dominated and I think that anyone, especially women, should feel very comfortable expressing when someone's saying something that they feel is in inappropriate or making them uncomfortable. But like you said, you know, outing them on Twitter in that way was maybe not the best way to do it. Um, right. And I mean, other people are like, oh, you should have just talked to them. And I mean, I don't think that's always the easiest thing to do. Right. Um, but again, that probably, w outing them on Twitter was not maybe the best alternative. And then like you said, every every step in that chain after that was at least, I don't know, ridiculously out of proportion, but definitely, you know, harsher than it probably needed to be. And this is something we see on the internet all the time. I was talking to someone yesterday and was just kind of making the correlation between when you're walking down the sidewalk and someone bumps into you and they say, oh, I'm sorry, and then you say, oh, no problem, no worries. But then if the same similar thing happens in a car, if someone cuts you off, you have a little bit more distance between you, and so then you're honking and calling them a fucking asshole and stuff. And so I think that's what happens on the internet, too. If it were just like an in-person conversation between these two people, she'd turn around and say, hey, guys, knock it off. And they say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you, and that'd be it. But once you put this extra barrier of the internet, you know, the response gets so much more outsized, and I think that's something that 
people need to stop, even though we have Twitter and things, this would have been better as an in-person conversation. Right. It shouldn't have been, because once you add that layer of internet, then people get nastier than maybe they would be otherwise. I, I can't wait for the comments on this video. <laughs> <laughs> on this video? Well, we'll yeah. see. Maybe, right. maybe people... Don't uh, leave a comment. Come find us and we can talk about it. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about it in person. Oh, we can you can talk with Ryan in person. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of comments, you guys put up a post yesterday that got a lot of comments. <laughs> Well, so um, so the background is that Anthony and I were lucky enough to go to the Game of Thrones uh, premiere in San Francisco. HBO is doing a sort of tour of the West Coast with uh, cast members from Game of Thrones and screening the, f the season premiere of uh, season three um, there. And so it's a lot of fun. We got to ask a bunch of questions of the cast on the red carpet. And since we're a tech blog, we decided to ask a few you know, tech questions, one of which was, um, are you an iPhone or Android user, and what's your favorite app? So, uh, you know, we talked to six or seven of the cast members, and five of them, I mean, you know, uh, almost all of them except for one had an iPhone, and so I kind of jokingly wrote this story, you know, almost a satire, like five out of six Game of Thrones cast members prefer iPhone to Android. And uh, the reaction was <laughs> just really amazing. Like, we had a whole, like, more than 100 comments. We have 125 um, right now. Yeah, yeah, 125 <laughs> comments as I'm looking right now. And so many of them <laughs> are like. And they're all, they're all like Android users being like, what the fuck, who cares, you know? <laughs> <laughs> some of them are Android, and some of them are just disgruntled former TechCrunch readers who now <laughs> say they're removing TechCrunch from their feeds. They're unliking TechCrunch on Facebook because I don't think they could tell that you were joking and they thought that this <laughs> was a serious story and that now all of a sudden we're doing red carpet news. I mean, I do think that that's, uh, I, I mean, a common problem with, you know, like I think uh, it's fair that on TechCrunch, I mean, I think there's like a sort of a, a lot of range in tones and I think sometimes people think we're being serious when we're not. Um, I think also there's, you know, on the flip side, sometimes we, you know, by looking at the comments, we think this is what the response is to a story um, when that's, really, you know, it's like that's just how the people who happen to get the most pissed off because they saw the headline on Facebook and so now they're really upset. Yeah, I, I get the feeling that no one, well, not no one, I get the feeling that the vast majority of people who commented on this story didn't actually read the post or watch the video that had interviews with the uh, cast members, which is fine. Right. You know. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's fine that no one read. I just don't think you should leave a comment. I, I think, like, when you leave a comment on a post that you haven't read, you're basically outing yourself as a moron. Um, <laughs> but, um, but I think, like, I think there are, like, probably, it's fair to, like, if you think, like, oh, like, wh I don't understand why, like, TechCrunch is doing red carpet coverage. Like, that is, like, a totally fair criticism. But, right. like, to just be like, I read the headline and I have a comment. Um, but I do think that was actually one of the more other interesting things about the premiere besides, you know, our post was just the fact that it was, like, really heavy on tech press because it was a, you know, San Francisco event. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of the tech reporters there were all kind of looking at each other being like, what are we doing here? Um, yeah. I mean, we were all excited to be there, but everyone kind of understood, like, oh, like, there's not going to be uh, a ton of, you know, news. We're just kind of all kind of here to... <laughs> Try to try to like you know meet some like famous people and, and ask them some random questions. Yeah, well, like how are you? I think sometimes that happens. Like how are you going to turn that into a post? You get yeah. invited, and now I feel like more and more this is happening as right. Hollywood and Silicon Valley get closer. You get invited to this thing ostensibly to cover it, but you think how am I going to turn this into a post? And I thought you guys did a good kind of funny job of it. But right. Well, I, I talked to HBO afterwards, like some some people from there, and and so I got a back backstory on what what the tour was about. They actually, they stopped in San Francisco, but they also stopped in LA and Seattle. So they kind of hit like tech hubs on the West Coast as well as LA. Normally for these things, they'll have like a screening um, in LA or New York, but since so much of the cast is like, since so many of them are uh, British or from Europe, um, they figured, you know, if we're gonna go through the expense of flying them all the way out here for a premiere in LA, they'd also hit these other two stops. What do you yeah. think the actors felt like being interviewed <laughs> by TechCrunch? Uh, um, I mean, it seemed like they had, you know, I, I don't know, like they were they were definitely, you know, super friendly, and uh, I think it, I I would my guess is that honestly, it, like barely, you know, that I'm sure they just get all right. kinds of random questions, right. and like this was just, you know, a little bit of a a little bit of a twist on it. I don't well, know. Well, we also yeah. found out about great new apps like uh, Caitlin Stark uh, explained net a to... You guys don't <laughs> right. know what net a <laughs> oh, yeah, No, you didn't on this video. You're like, what's that? But it's a very bad, popular yeah, fashion. Yeah, so that was really... 
That was, that was, if you were going to leave angry comments, that's what you should have left angry comments about, right. clearly. Yeah, and Hugmail, Hugmail, <laughs> hug uh, Kit Harrington, who plays uh, Jon Snow, really loves Hugmail, which is an app yeah. for sending postcards to people that you care about. Sounds like Postagram, basically, too. Yeah. So, but, I mean, um, it seems like there's a couple, yeah, variants on that. Yeah. Right. Anyways, okay. what else? Um, so I guess the other thing that, that happened this week, or it's not sort of one, but something that sort of, there have been a number of stories about different companies, you know, saying that they're working on smartwatches. I think uh, Samsung was one, LG was one. Um, there are rumors that Google is working on a, on a smartwatch. Um, I think in all these cases, there's not a lot of specifics yet. It's just sort of either completely a rumor or just, you know, an executive saying, yes, we're working on it. Um, but it is sort of interesting just that, like, you know, there's so much convergent, I mean, like excitement, everyone kind of jumping on this band, bandwagon, at least, you know, to some extent, you know, these could all be like R&D projects that never see the light of day, like, hard to say, but um, that, you know, everyone seems to think that this is a direction that things are going in. Do we even know that people want smartwatches? I mean, outside of, like, the 50,000 people who signed up for Pebble or whatever, um, you know, is this actually a mass market product? Raise your hand if you want a smartwatch. I, I mean, I would, <laughs> you know... <laughs> <laughs> Raise your I, hand if you'll pay 150 to $200 for a smartwatch. I would say that I wouldn't be in the early adopter group, um, but I, a, I'm, I mean, I'm usually not in the early adopter group, so it's really good that I'm a tech blogger. Um, <laughs> but that I think that, you know, certainly if, if other people, if I started to see a lot of other people using, I mean, I had the same response, you know, when people were like, you know, when they announced the iPhone, and I was just like, oh, like, great, like, and I, like my iPod with a phone, that doesn't, I don't want that, that sounds terrible. Um, and what was the last time you wore a watch? Uh, probably shortly after I bought my first iPhone. Yeah, I haven't I haven't used a watch personally since since I started carrying around a clock on my phone in my pocket. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it's been years and years. So I don't know, but this is an interesting. Our colleague Felicia, who's a TechCrunch TV uh, producer, said um, that it's interesting because this is all kind of bubbled up from Kickstarter, from Pebble, and now we're seeing the large corporations follow suit. Um, so it's kind of cool that this is something that came up from the grassroots. Right. And, and, you know, again, it's hard to say exactly if that was the cause and effect, but, but it does seem like Pebble really was kind of, at least in the, in the public imagination, kind of led the way um, with their, you know, incredibly successful Kickstarter campaign. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, um, it's time for the weekend, so uh, thanks for watching, and uh, check back in next week for Crunch Week. <laughs>